and welcome to today's video. If you are new to my channel, a warm welcome. I am going to be showing you how I use ClickUp to plan ahead and plan out the project capacity in my business. So if you are struggling to make sure that you are not overbooking yourself or you do want to ensure that you're booking enough projects for your business and you want to be able to track that in an organized way, I'm going to show you how I do that using ClickUp. If you're new to my channel, a massive warm welcome. It's great to have you here. I'm going to show you exactly what I do in my business and how I can also use this to manage my revenue and ensure that we are not overbooking ourselves in the business. Okay, so we are inside of my ClickUp. This is actually a template that is found within one of my products called the ClickUp Plug and Play Template Bundle. I'll link that below and you can definitely check it out after this video. So inside of this particular template, you'll see that I've labeled it as a project booking template. Now, I started to use this sometime last year just to help me keep a track of the types of projects I was booking in my agency and to ensure that we were booking clients in a specific way. So this has really helped to streamline my process and to also keep a track of the dates of when we're available to onboard new clients versus overextending ourselves, the team, and making sure that we can actually deliver the work to our clients in the best way. So this is a standalone list that you'll see and you can recreate inside of ClickUp. And as you can see, the statuses that we are using are broken down by each quarter. Now, I will typically plan this out a quarter ahead. So in this example, we are planning for Q2. So each status on the list has a breakdown for Q1, Q3, Q4. So if you really wanted to map out your project capacity for your business for the entire year, you definitely can do that. So we're using a mixture of the statuses, but also we are using custom fields in this area. And I will also link to a video where I share with you the differences between list statuses and custom fields. So you can definitely check that video out. It's really helpful just to show you how you can utilize the differences. So within this particular list, we have four tasks. So each task represents a service or project that we will have capacity for. So you can see here that I've already mapped out my availability for April. These are the services that I will open up spaces for. And these are the dates. So we have your service actually of what we will be providing. So this is actually a drop down custom field. We have projects, VIP days, intensives, which could be 90 minute or 60 minute intensives, retainers or other. So if you do bespoke packages or you might have scope for other services, then that might fall into that category. These are the buckets of types of services that I use and most done for you service providers will use these as well. If you're a coach, for example, and you do one on one coaching, perhaps you do group programs, you might use this a bit differently. But done for you service providers such as OBMs, VAs might find this of use, especially if you have retainers and then you book out your retainers and you want to be able to book in VIP days and projects. This will help you to keep track while you have your retainer clients as well. So we have our services and then we have the availability. Now this is not a due date field. So this field will not show up in your task list of what you have to do. So I'm not going to have this task showing on April the 8th. This is a date field that you can create using the custom fields and essentially I will just add a new date field and label it. So we've labeled it as availability and I'm available on April the 8th. The 22nd for VIP days and for new retainers, April the 4th, April the 18th. I can 100% choose to change these dates around. These are the dates that look great for me right now as I forecast ahead and it could definitely change. So VIP days, these are relative prices. So it's not necessarily my actual pricing, but I am putting in relative prices. And what I like is that this field is actually a currency field. So again, if I go to add a new custom field, there is a money 
um, option where you can actually add this in and you can label it. So I've labeled it the job value and that allows me to see what the job is worth. And I've added my currency. I'm based in the UK. So I'm going to use the currency field. And as you can see, it calculates the total. So if I have an income goal that I am looking to achieve in the month of April, this is not necessarily allowing me to hit that income goal. I can then adjust my job value or I can add in other dates where I would be happy to work with clients. So I might add in a couple of intensive dates. So what I can do is duplicate out these tasks. So I'm going to click highlight on both sides and then I'm just going to duplicate the task. So at the top here, it opens up my menu. I'm going to just tell it which list I want these tasks to be duplicated into. And then we're going to just update the fields here. So I don't want to have four retainer spots open. So I actually want to have two intensive spots. And so I'm just going to open up two intensive spots here and we'll just update that. So as you can see, as I update the fields, it then updates my income and calculates that automatically. So the next field is a booked field. Now, the way that I use this in my business is I use this as a checkbox field. And essentially, once a slot is booked, I will update this. I will typically update this field when a contract is signed or a client pays for a deposit or their first invoice. And it just means that I know that slot is definitely taken. And you'll notice that the task itself there's nothing in the task but the label of the task is the client's name now you can choose to use a company name or you know a different sort of labeling I will just put in the company client name my agency doesn't work with an extensive amount of clients each month so I don't need to worry about going nailing it down in the labeling however the client name works really well. And that just tells me that actually this is booked. So once that is booked, I'll just go in here, update it. Um, we'll put Joe blogs in there. And you can see that that is now a confirmed booking. What I love about using this method is it allows me to have an overview of what projects I have booked versus what availability I have left. And it also tells me if I am actually fully booked that month. Sometimes we think, can I squeeze in an additional project? Actually, I may not have the capacity or I do have the capacity and I can adjust as I need to do that. You can do this throughout the rest of your year. So if I wanted to do the same process and have the same availability, for Q3, for example, or for the month of May, I definitely can do that. So again, I'll just go through the same process and duplicate out my tasks and those tasks will be recreated and I would just update the field. So for example, if these tasks are now going to be for July, let's just say for the next quarter, we'll just pop the start dates into July. So for retainers, we'll update those. We've got July 4th, which is Independence Day for our US friends. And perhaps we will stagger our start date. So we don't necessarily have start dates on the same days. And then it will also sprinkle in dates where we are available for intensives. Does this link back to my scheduler? Now, this might be a question that you have, and the answer is no. So if you do book in independent intensives and you are linking this with your scheduler, then you need to figure out a way where you can actually do that. So maybe through using Zapier. The only caveat with Zapier is you cannot connect custom fields. You would have to figure out a way to set up an automation. In this sense, it is a manual process that I use in my business. However, it still works really well. So we're going to pop these into Q3 and you can see there that it's breaking out our tasks. So I can see that these are my jobs for Q3 or my open booking spaces for Q3. So if you do like to book clients in advance and you like to start planning ahead in your business, this is a definitely a way for you to start managing that. And if you want to take it a step further, perhaps you have a team in your business. What you can also do is add a label and you can add people. Now, what this does is allows you to assign your team members to 
certain projects so you could go through your team and say who has availability for vip days or for projects in the month of july in the month of may april and then as you have more ideas around your team's availability you can then start to add people to the project so this is another great way for you to actually manage the capacity in your business so there you have it, just a really quick fire way of how you can use ClickUp to organise and manage your capacity for projects and booking in new clients in your business. Now, this process definitely doesn't replace your onboarding or your sales inquiry process or your pipeline, but it does help you to keep an overview or a track of upcoming revenue and your forecasting. If you do like to do tracking in ClickUp as well, you might also want to build out a dashboard. Let me know if this is something you would like to see on the channel channel, just drop a comment below and I'll definitely be able to sort that out for you. If you enjoyed today's video, definitely hit subscribe, drop a like, and you can also be sure to join the She Talk Systems Facebook community where I go live and do more workshops and trainings in the group. And also I will link below to the ClickUp plug and play template bundle. This is an extensive bundle to help you set up your ClickUp and really get started in using it as a service provider. So thank you so much for watching. Watching you guys, I drop a new video every single week and I will see you guys next time.